What's going on, Harvardites, and welcome to Ask Scott and Sean, episode 19. Now, if you guys have a question, go to the Ask Scott and Sean section on scottharvardfitness.com. There's a form that you guys can fill out and ask us your questions. So, today we have three questions again, right, Sean? Three questions, yes, three we do. Three Herbinite questions. Mm -hmm. Now, we should remind them that if you guys have quick questions, you can always visit us on Facebook. We're on there answering them pretty much all day, every day. So make sure you jump on there. But for those of you who were nice enough to send us a lot of detail, because we always ask for a lot of detail when they ask us really in-depth questions. Yeah. If uh, what I what I recommend for people who are asking questions is uh, before you send an email to to the Ask Scott and Sean, you know, ask yourself: Is this something that could easily be answered on the web page, or is this a, a question that just pertains to me? Because if it's a very subjective question. Um, and it's it's not specific enough uh, to what you're actually trying to get. Like if you're like, how many calories should I? Eat? We, we really, you know, we really can't say. We don't know enough detail to tell you exactly how much you should eat to know exactly how much you should be working out because we need to work with you personally in order to know all these details. So a lot of questions end up being like, well, it depends. Yeah. And if it's a question that if you ask yourself, be like, I guess that could depend. Then ask it on the uh, the Facebook page, or uh, ask it on the YouTube, or something like that. Facebook page is better. Or give us as much detail as possible when you submit your question to the Ask Scott and Sean page on the website. Because mm -hmm. we get a lot of we get a lot of people being like I said, there's a lot of young guys, a lot of new people who are like, I'm five six, I weigh one eighty, I work out, and I do this, and I eat this much, and then they'll they'll start to ask me specific questions. Where I'll be like, well, I, I still couldn't really answer this unless I was to work with that person personally. So just just be careful when you're asking questions, just because we don't want you to waste your time. Yes. Now I am. But, All right. So the first question is from Scott Ke Scott Kearsley from Washington, USA, and he says, "Hey guys, first I want to personally thank you for giving out quality information for us all to follow. You guys have been great guides in my journey to losing 100 pounds. Scott started at 306 and he's now down to 205. Great job, Scott." Now, to my question. Recently, I was sick for a good week with really high fevers and, of course, vomiting. Since recovering from that cold, it seems that my number of reps and sets of workouts are down. PRs and overall strength and motivation I once had seems to be lacking. The simplest of workouts now seems really strenuous and my usual set patterns I struggle to finish. Even cardio is harder at this point. I went from running two to three miles every other day to barely a mile every other day. So my question is, is this kind of extended recovery normal or just something in my head that I need to overcome? Thanks guys, keep doing what you do, Inspired Millions. Nice question, Scott. Thanks Good. for the question, Scott. Very in-depth. Scott. So basically, we don't know uh, how long of a period of time there was between when Scott was um, feeling better to when he started to work out. Um, we wouldn't recommend jumping and trying to hit your PRs that same week that you were sick and just barely started to recover. It's obviously a, there's a process. Uh, if you're sick for an entire week, you probably had something pretty nasty, so your recovery time will more likely take a little while longer. For me personally, uh, as gross as it is, I came home from Cancun and I was just you know pooping all the time and I was sick and I couldn't really do anything for about a week and a half. My workout sucked, I had no energy. Uh, I just wanted to sleep all day, I was dehydrated. All kinds of things happen that when you are sick, it you're, sucks. You're de <laughs> it sucks, and you're depleting your body of all kinds of stuff. You know, your micronutrients, nutrients. your micronutrients, you're dehydrated, and if you don't have all this stuff, minerals, in your body, you're not, obviously not gonna be able to do the same kind of hardcore workouts you were doing when you were perfectly fine. So, so. What do you want to add? Let's add to this question. Max out your nutrients. So if you get sick, one thing you want to do, and I tell this to all my clients, I say, listen, you're sick, overload yourself. Overload with vitamin C. Um, it's just going to end up being a diuretic anyway, so you'll just pee a little bit extra. That's fine. Uh, so you know, take your multi or eat your, if you can, eat a bunch of veggies, eat a bunch of fruits. Try to get a wide variety. Eat a bunch of food in general. Yeah. Um, like I was saying before, you want to eat. Uh, I always tell people to eat a bunch of glutamine foods, so chicken, beef, uh, beans, uh, dairy, any dairy products, those have a lot of glutamine in them. Glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in the body, and some of the primary roles of glutamine 
is to support the immune system. If you're jumping back into stuff too quickly, then obviously what you're going to do, your immune system, say this is your, your normal immune system, you're already down here, right? Yeah. And it's trying to creep back up and you work out, whoop, you might end up lower than where you first went into the gym. Not a good thing. You're just going to get more sick the lower your immune system gets. Your body's trying to regulate back into proper homeostasis, yada yada. Yeah, like even if you feel like you can go in 100%, you should still take it easy, gradually work back up to that 100%, because you don't want to hurt yourself even more. It's like having a car. You know, you could put two dollars of gas in your car and go 80 miles an hour, but then you're gonna stop in five seconds because you only have barely any gas in that tank. Yeah. Most of us have been sick. So we know, you know, sometimes we're not so sick. He said he was puking from the cold. I've never puked from a cold, so we don't, you know, whether it was a cold or not, like I said before, it might have been a flu, you know, flu type of thing, because um, you said you got, you know, a cold before that you thought where you were puking from, but it could have been a flu. Yeah. So you got to be careful. Could have been any kind of crazy stomach bug, virus. I mean, they're, they're, they're sporadic, they happen. Yeah, and, and you just got to take care of yourself in that amount of time. Overload yourself, rest eat a ton of food, you know, keep moving if you can, but don't do anything that's gonna use any type of major energy resources. And just gradually work back into your routines and definitely don't try to do your PRs the week after you were sick. <laughs> Cause you're gonna be disappointed, unless yeah. you're a super freak. It's gonna be relative to you really, so take your time. It's just like a rehab on anything else. Think of it as a form of rehab. So you're just gonna slowly start to rehab your body right back to where you were, and before you know it, You'll be 100% again. Nice. Unless you die. Yeah, then you're dead. Don't die. Dying sucks just as much as being sick, or even more. Possibly. <laughs> All right, you ready for question two? No, yes, now. Okay. Question two is from Michael Doyle. <sighs> Let me bring up the noise level, sorry. Michael says, hey guys, I'm training for my first Tough Mudder. I'm getting a close group of my friends together who are all a lot more fit than I am. I'm 6'3 and weigh 308 now, 30% body fat two months ago. But I lift a lot, six days a week, 225 bench, 800 pound leg press, Sick. 200 shoulder press following nice. Scott's workout routines. I'm working on getting my cardio up and with a 20 week window to train, I feel that I'm going to have a good amount of time to get a handle on this. My biggest concern is not the endurance, but climbing over walls and other obstacles like that. I'm doing sets of pull ups on a machine that subtract my body weight so that to let you pull up at about 100 pounds for my actual weight. My diet was pretty rubbish, so changing that to lower fat, would you change anything else to help train for an event of this magnitude? Can I, uh, can, can we jump so back? He's 6'3 and he's 308. No. Yeah, he's a, he's a big guy. 30% body fat two months I'll ago. I'll talk about Scott real quick, because cause we, uh, we had to film and, and then cut it off before and we didn't get to say this. Scott, you lost 100 pounds? That's awesome. That's really awesome. And what I'd like to see if you have it is uh, you can, if you haven't already, post some of your transformation pictures on the uh, the Scott Herman fan page on the on the, the Facebook community page. page. Yeah. So yeah, we want to see. Idea. Yeah, we want to see what what you did. We're really impressed with that. Losing 100 pounds is no joke. That's no easy task, especially to do all on your own. So props to you, Scott. And who who's this we're talking to now? Now we're talking about Michael Doyle. Michael. Mike Doyle. Michael Doyle is doing a Tough Mudder, he's 6'3". 6'3", 308, pretty big dude. I wish I was 6'3". He, all of his friends are more fit than, than he is, so he's got 20 weeks, he said, right? 20 weeks is plenty of time uh, to prepare for an event like this. Yeah. I've done two, I'm doing a third one July 15th, and Tough Mudder is more of a more of a team event, so it's not like you yourself have to jump over these walls. Because you help each other, you lift each other up, you know, people like stand against the wall, you put your foot on their hands, you get boosted over. Um, you do have to lower yourself, which, you know, can be tough if you've never really done that before. But he's on the right track, he's doing push-ups and pull-ups, and he's trying to get his upper body strength to a point where he can hold himself. Yeah. Pretty much as long as you can start to do pull-ups like you have been, and you can do slow negatives, which basically means that you'll be able to lower yourself once you get on the other side of the walls. You'll be fine. And the Tough Mudders are, they're made so that pretty much anyone, well not anyone, but all sorts of people can do them. Yeah, they're pretty fun. Yeah, um, what I was thinking was even if you know he loses 
you know, six pounds a month, he's got five months. Even if he loses six pounds, saving seven pounds a month, um, that'll be 30 to 35 pounds. That'll make the whole process a lot easier. So if you have a lot of body fat on you, I don't, I don't know how much body 30%, fat. 30%, he said. 30, yeah, so he's got, he's got plenty of body fat to burn. Uh, what I'll focus on is just losing weight in that, that amount of time. Doing a lot of endurance work will definitely rip the weight off. Focus on having good nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, practice. If you have anywhere where you can build a wall type situation, um, like, good idea. like the one in uh, American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, you have anywhere where you can start practicing, doing as much pull-ups as possible. Uh, what I was going to mention is if you want to link, where would that be, right here? Yeah, we can link it above. The, uh, the pull-up progression? Yeah, pull-up progressions. That's a good video. Yeah, so I, I would recommend using the, the stepping one, I believe we did on there, right? We did, we did a couple different progressions. We used the bench, and then we also used the, the pull-up revolution. Yeah. So. What I would do is I would focus on the stepping one, where he jumps up and tries to hold... Um, the isometric pose at the top for as long as you can and then just do a really slow negative mm -hmm. and that's definitely a good way to if, you know when you're a bigger person to get your uh, your pull up strong and also another good thing to do with um, Tough Mudder is what I did for my training is a lot of running on the treadmill and I, I would increase the incline uh, it's gonna vary depending on where your Tough Mudder is mine was in Vermont on the side of a, of a hill for skiing a like, mountain. A, like a ski resort yeah side of a mountain <laughs> yeah um, so it was a lot of up and down hill and some of the hills are really steep so I needed to make sure that I could handle that and even going downhill you want to make sure that your ankles are strong so one of the things that I did was I would run on the incline, then I would also start uh, shot, side shuffling as well, and I would go back and forth from my left side to my right side, and get my ankles used to moving left to right, uh, more lateral movements, and that seems to help me out a lot too. And I don't know, maybe I don't know if every tough mudder has that ramp you have to run up. I think they do. Oh. Mm. I don't know where. Maybe if it's a skate park, you can practice running up a rampish type thing, but yeah. I mean, if your team's there, everyone's helping each other, all the other people there are kind of like your teammates because they'll help you too, um, I, you'll be fine. As long as your diet's in the control, like you said, you're lowering your fat, just make sure your protein is high enough so that you can sustain the muscle tissue you have while you're dropping the weight. You could say 1.2 grams to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of lean body weight is good enough, and you can calculate your fat and carbs after you get that percentage down. Yeah, I'm not going to go into detail. Yeah. I'm not going to speculate. But um, what I would say is, is uh, do some trail running. I like doing trail running. It's really fun. Uh, get some good hiking boots, boots and start practicing. And then uh, don't use those hiking boots during the tough winter because they might get stuck in the mud. Yeah, actually, I used um, the New Balance Minimus. It's a very, very light shoe. And you that you kept your shoe. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tied them really tight. lose their shoes from what I hear. They, well, they, could, they do lose their shoes if they don't tie them up enough. Like, I make sure I go all the way to the top on the laces. Yeah. But the first Tough Mudder I did, I wore sneakers, and they felt like they weighed 30 pounds a piece from all the mud and stuff being caked on. The thin shoes, like the Vibram technology, all that stuff, those shoes are so light that it doesn't really make much of a difference. You don't feel like you're, you're dragging cinder blocks. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely trail running, man. I love doing it. I definitely recommend it for something like that. That will build your ankle stability as well. Yep, that will. Jumping for sure. all over the rocks and whatnot. Find, go to Vermont and find where does he live? I don't know where he lives. He has to us his, his address. Yeah, find, find a local, you know, some local trails or mountains or something. Start, start doing, doing that. It's fun. So sweet, Michael. Make sure you do some video and some photos and let us know how you do, man. Good luck. Tear that up. If you happen to be doing the one in Vermont, and uh, I post that I'm going to be there, come over and say hi. And we have one question left. Sean likes to slowly get closer and closer and closer to the camera as we do these. I stay in the same spot, I have like a mark on the floor. And a mark Sean, on the floor! Sean, I think Sean just wants to look <laughs> bigger, so he gets and tries to take up more and more camera space. <laughs> All right, so the last question is from Phoebean Shah. Phoebean. Phoebean. Really? Yeah. Maybe it's Fenrir. Yeah, Fenrir. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Fenrir. 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 Hey, Scott and Sean. Thank you so much for all the videos. I am a subscriber and a paid member of your site. I had a very important question, well, important for me at least. How important is hitting your macros daily slash calorie requirements? I've started logging everything I eat and I'm consuming and I'm constantly falling short by 500 to 700 calories. 
I am full by what I am eating. I am full by what I am eating. Uh, I can't even read his writing. I am full by what I am eating. I am seeing fairly good results and am making, maintaining my macros, 40% carb, 40% protein, 20% fat. I feel eating those calories is going to put on fat, but then I have fear about starvation mode. I'm at my target weight and I'm just trying to tone up more. I'm currently at 18% body fat, down from 22%. Also, I hate doing cardio. No matter what I've tried, I don't stick to it. I've recently started getting into biking and go three to four hour bike rides on every other Sunday. Do you think doing all your cardio in one go is a good idea? I seem to enjoy doing it. If you need it, I'm six feet tall, 179 pounds, and roughly an 1800 daily calorie goal. So he's eating what 1800 calories. Please, please, please answer this. Best. Thinner. Yeah, a lot of people make things a lot more confusing than they need to be. Um, him being worried about starvation mode, mm -hmm. which your body isn't going to go into a real starvation mode that you have to worry about until you get like beyond 48 hours without eating. Yeah, it and takes you, a while. I've, gone, I've done 24 hour fast plenty of times. Um, the only issue with it is some hunger. Uh, it's it's totally safe to do. You don't have to worry about losing a ton of muscle, anything like that. Obviously, it's a good idea to keep amino acids, protein in you uh, throughout the day, but it's absolutely not needed in order not to lose muscle unless you're going over, you know, 48 hour period. I think for the most part, though, Sean. This is this is what's going on, and this is the, one of the problems with those percentages and everything. It's is, better to know the number, like the actual number is is, and this is this can go for almost everyone out there. When you're starting a diet, this is what you can focus on, and then you can worry about the rest after this. He says he's getting full, but is he eating enough protein when he's getting full? Because overall, that's, that's, that's going to matter more than anything. Whenever you start anyone out on a diet, you want to fill their protein out first, or whenever you are on a diet, you want to make sure overall um, what is paramount is getting in your protein number for the day. So. I, I've been I've been under for the past like two day two or three days or so and it sucks I don't want to be under. That's why you're but, so small now. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm shrinking. <laughs> that's why you know my, my number is uh, I try to stay around 200 to like 240 grams of protein. But yeah, I've been I've been like fluctuating all over the place. But that that's what I worry about over over anything, mm -hmm. whether I'm cutting um, or I'm bulking. Although bulking isn't as big of a deal. When you're cutting, it definitely matters a lot more. You actually want a little bit more protein than even you know recommended one gram. I would go up to as high as 1.5 grams per pound. I do about 200, 210 grams of protein a day, mm -hmm. and I fill that up uh, a lot. I don't think a lot of herbivores even know like just kind of some basic facts like one gram of protein is four calories, one gram of carbs is four calories, one gram of fat is nine calories. And you should make a video on it. Well, is this that's going to be part of the, the macro video that we're making. I've been telling him to make that video. We'll, we'll get we'll get it coming. We'll get it coming. Um, but <laughs> what, I, what I do for my meal is I usually eat around, I say like 200 grams of protein. So 200 times four is 800 calories. So 800 calories is already there yeah. for protein. And if you want to figure out... Those what, are the most important calories. After that, you can fill everything. Yeah, and then what I do is I, I kind of fill my fat and carbs. My car depending on what I'm doing, I might eat more carbs. So I say between like 250 and 300, maybe a little over 300 if I'm doing a lot of stuff. And then my fat's usually around like 80 grams a day, 80 to 90 grams a day. Uh, he needs to crack down, man. Like if he's not, if he's just full and oh, I can't eat enough, dude, crack down. You gotta crack down, man up. And just eat the oh, calories. Oh, I mean, he's doing well. He's on the side. He's, so if he's using the meal plan, yeah, eighteen hundred calories, and he's full after what fourteen hundred? I mean, he's eat more. Yeah, he's just he's gonna need to man up, eat the food. Like it's, it's eighteen. You don't have to call him out. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's eighteen hundred. Sean's calories. being so mean. I'll eat eighteen hundred calories right now on camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so here, uh, log into the meal plan, and you know it, it told you what percentages you're doing. But go over to the, uh, scroll down to the bottom of the meal planner and it'll tell you exactly what you're getting for grams and how many calories you're eating right in the middle. It's like a, it's like a lighter gray area. And make sure you're getting, I mean, you're 179 pounds, about 18% body fat. So we'll say, give or take, you should be getting between 170 to 200 grams of protein a day. Easy. Yeah. Which is pretty much where I'm at. So if you're below 170 to 200 grams of protein when you go check that calculation, that's the first thing you need to adjust in your meal plan. Up that protein. Um, 
Yeah, no. should, that should be. No, the Viking. He so he. Oh, he's, come with Viking. He has a question, and um, his question is whether it's good to do just cardio all three to day. yeah all in one day or to break it up into separate days. Um, here's the thing: if you burn the calories doing it in one session, or you burn the calories doing it in separate sessions. Overall, what matters is that you burn the calories. Now, uh, which I, I believe it's debatable. I, I have to like, I have to go look at some stuff because off the top of my head, uh, I really I'm not drawing anything up. So you don't want to spew bur bur science and just be like, no, you have to do it every day. Yeah, I mean, it, if you're getting it done during those days, chances are, I mean, put it this way, you can do a marathon, right, within a day. I don't, I don't recommend doing marathons, by the way, but. You can do a marathon and you can burn 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 calories, right? Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes more depending on how long it is. So you can, you know, you give yourself a lot more room in your diet to eat more. So just burn, just, I recommend just doing it either way. Three, whether you like doing it one day, you, you hate it. And you but there is a difference too. Um, I mean, I don't know what kind of biking you're doing. Uh, there is a difference between... Yeah, <laughs> if you're doing this kind of biking, you're definitely not burning any calories. Uh, there's definitely a difference between biking and say running, or if you're biking but biking up hills, obviously you're burning more calories. So for me personally, what I like to do is, I hate running on the treadmill, but what I like to do is like 12 to 15 minutes, like three times a week, and sometimes on the weekend, especially now that's nice out, I'll go for a quick like four mile run outside. It usually takes me like a half hour, 45 minutes. I don't even know if that makes sense. I don't yeah. want to say I'm doing like 500 <laughs> miles. I would say like 45 minutes usually takes me to do like... 45 for four miles? Yeah. That breaks down like 10 mile, a 10 minute mile. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I take my time outside, <laughs> enjoying the weather, you know, looking around stuff. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Well, Just actually, no. What I actually do is a spot where it's a quarter mile sprint. And it's, like it's, this, right? it's a it's a um, it's a stoplight to a stoplight, and I wait till all the cars line up. And when the light goes green, I race them to the next light. So it's a hit. It's like a hit sprint. Yeah, right? exactly. But for me, that's what works for me. I feel better just overall. If I'm doing cardio a couple of times a week in smaller sessions than just everything at once on a Sunday. Because even actually, because I was kind of doing that because we were playing basketball every Sunday, and I wasn't doing any cardio during the week, and I would just kind of feel three hours. Yeah, but I would I would still kind of feel like sluggish up until the next Sunday because I wasn't just keeping up with it. Then I would feel fine at basketball. So I keep snapping my fingers. Sweet. Yeah, I mean conditioning is conditioning. Uh, if you don't like it, you don't like it. I don't think most people really enjoy doing like any type of metabolic conditioning when it comes to breathing heavy. And uh, yeah, it sucks. Well, so let's uh, let's wrap up this ass, Scott and Sean. Just do it. So for here. Check out what your macro percentage, what your macros actually are in grams. Um, maybe stay away from the percentages and using those as your basic guide for now because you want to know exactly what you're putting in your body. And then just use your visual. Use your visual. Look in the mirror. If you think that you're losing muscle, you'll see in the mirror. Test your body fat. You know, or maybe like on a biweekly basis, just to make sure that you're not losing lots of muscle. You can go to your local gym; they can do that for you. But the visual is going to be the best look because if you look in the mirror. And you're looking like you're gaining some poundage, well, then you need to adjust your calories. You look like, if you look like you're getting smaller, losing muscle, then there's a calorie adjustment. You could, um, if you're starting to look like Sean, well, there's no medical, you know, anything that can help you with that. <laughs> um, so say it's 1,800 calories for protein. You take, you know, say you had 900 calories of fat, you know, you had 100 grams of fat then you could just fill the rest up with carbs if you want, which is 100 calories for carbs, which sucks, but you could do that, or you could bring the fat down to say like 80 grams or so, and then fill those carbs up. So that, that's basically how you're gonna break it down, rather than do it you know, all just percentage-wise. Just break it down into the numbers, so you get the 449, and then if you're gonna be drinking alcohol or anything, that's those seven, uh, seven calories per gram. Yeah, just stay away from that. <laughs> All right, guys. So we hope you enjoyed the Ask Scott and Sean episode 19. Sean and I love answering your questions. If you have something quick, once again, go to the Facebook page. If you want to ask us a question directly, give us as much information as possible and go to the Ask Scott and Sean section on scottfitness.com. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
<laughs> yeah, I caught your hand this time. <laughs> See you guys later. Ah.